Hello everybody, it is I, uh, 8-Bit Games here, and today we will be reviewing the Minecraft Psy mod. We will be going over some general spell components that I feel are used in most um, spells, and we will also be going some tricks that I think will be great for beginners. We will also be discussing the different types of spell components, and the different types of spell inputs and outputs, as I see those little big misconception or misinformation around how some of those things work and so forth among the many inputs and outputs that spell components use those three main types vectors selectors and constants vectors are a set of three numerical inputs that can mean one of two things a line with the direction and length slash magnitude, or a coordinate position in the world. Almost all calculations that make values involving vectors are done by spell pieces. So most inputs you'll be asked for just involve the position you want the vector to head towards. There are three subtypes of inputs that spells will ask for. The first is position vectors. Position vectors are the absolute values from the origin of a position. Think about Minecraft coordinates. Three values which state how far something is from zero zero. This is typically used if the spell references to a location in which something happens or if it's asking for the location of a block it's meant to target. The second type of te vector is known as relative vector. Relative vectors are just like position vectors, but instead of being in relation to the origin, it's in relation to another position. For example, we have two points, one at position 323 three, three, and the second one at 353. Three. Let's say the second point is a relative vector to the first point. Point 2's position vector is 353. Three while its relative vector to point 1 is 0, 2, 0. The value of a relative vector can be interpreted as the numbers added for one point to become another. Relative vectors are barely used, or are specifically asked for by spells like mass block break sequence. The third type of vector is direction vector. You might hear direction vectors be called look vectors, ray vectors, or unit vectors. This is because a direction vector is a normal vector that shortened to a length of one unit, so it only states the direction it's going in, and not the length of the vector. Let's take our first position from the previous example. If we take its position vector and divide each value by the length of, a, of the vector, or the distance from it in the origin, we get a new direction vector that points to the first point. We can get the length of any vector by using the Pythagorean theorem. Direction vectors are commonly used to calculate new vectors or as a direction to send a raycast. Now let's move to the second type of input slash outputs, targets. Targets are everything from spell pieces to entities and even vectors. Target inputs are usually whatever a spell component wants to affect. For example, a spell might want to edit a vector to get a specific stat from a player. Only entity targets are given as such outputs, but the target vectors and spell pieces are usually asked is inputs. Target entities are the only ones you should really be concerned with familiarizing, as they are the most varied. Entities include everything Minecraft sees an entity or has an entity data for. This includes mobs, falling blo blocks, projectiles, and even dropped items. Here's an example of each of those. No same thing similar? Each one states the type of entity the entity's name, special data, level data, and coordinates. You won't interact too much with any of these specifically, but in case you want to know, it's all there. 
The last type of input slash output is constants. Constants are numbers, specifically any real numbers, such as negative numbers, non-whole numbers, integers, and irrational numbers, too. These are commonly used to describe values, such as a spell's power, how long the spell lasts, or for calculating details. If you want to know more about what a constant can be, just search the categorization of real numbers to find out. Now that we know what our inputs and outputs mean, let's get into our four types of spell components. There are four types of spell components. Fix, Operators, Selectors, and Miscellaneous. Fix are anything that can cause effects to the outside world or inside the CAD. Fix fall into two categories, Kinetic and Non-Kinetic. Kinetic tricks include outside effects like placing a block, smelting items, or adding motion. Non-kinetic tricks include things like canceling spell effects or changing the bullet you have selected. Operators are a type of spell component involving calculative or data collective processes. Operators fall into two categories, collective and calculated operators. Collective operators are operators that involve data collection processes. These operators take a selected target and get data, alternate data from it. Entity health is a good example. It takes a selected entity and returns its health value. Calculative operators, however, are well calculated. They do mathematical operations involving numbers and vectors. Vector construct is a good example. It takes three constants and creates a new vector out of them. The third type of spell component, selectors, do exactly that. They select things. They specifically state targets for spell to either get data from or to affect. Selector caster is a good example. It selects the caster of the spell as the target of its effects. The final category of spell components are called miscellaneous. Miscellaneous spell pieces include connectors, constants, and things related to errors. They are grouped together because for some, we'd have entire categories for a very small number of spell pieces. For your spell pieces, like Error Suppressor and Error Catcher, which don't really fit in with other pieces. I'll be doing another video explaining how these pieces work in more detail. At this moment, however, you should be able to do fine without understanding every miscellaneous piece. Now that we've gone through the basic types of Psi spell components, let's get to basic spells that we'll, we will be using heavily in later videos. Here we have is Operator Vector, which takes a position vector and gives you a ray vector uh, in response to it. Um, I'm most certain this is like uh, you take a position vector and it makes a ray vector in terms of that position from its line to the origin. Uh, so yeah, you know, if, if I was standing right here and this was my position vector, then this would be the ray vector that comes from it, straight from this block to that block. Vector construct takes uh, coordinates on the x, y, and z axis and makes a position vector on to that position. Like right where I'm standing, if I put in negative 8, 41, and 7 in their respective axis slots it would give me this position right here no matter where i was in the world it would be referring to this position constant is you know it's a spell piece that allows you to put in numbers for things like vector construct it has a total number of five digits it can also do negative digits and it can also do digits of a non-whole value, such as I can do 0.2 if I wanted to. Next we have is a trick, conjure block. 
conjo block takes a position vector and a time and conjures a translucent block kind of like a barrier in one place time refers to how long the block stays in place until it breaks kind of like air so I, I wouldn't call it like an invincible thing and it does take a bit of size the more time it takes trick die targets a specific spell piece in this grid uh, hence the target input number is the grid number and you can kind of see it right here selected five five and then it uh just prevents that trick from casting in the spell so if die cast uh and you have another spell that targets that spell will not execute when die is executing next we have is selector caster selector caster is a sentry it's a entity selector that specifically targets the person casting the spell. If you have a spell in your gun and you activate it and as caster, it will choose you. Alright. Which will usually look something like this. Next we have is block presence. This is a uh, selector for blocks. In such a century, uh, you give it a position vector. And then it targets that block. So I can put it in the trick block break spell under the this position. And it will then target this position and break the block in that position. Yeah. Block presence is what you need to select the block specifically. Alright. Unless it's the difference between when a spell targets a specific block and when the spell targets the area a block is in. Those are two different things. It's kind of semantics, but they're kind of important. Next is selector attack target. This selector makes it so that if I have a sword and I have a zombie, and let's say in I have a psi sword that has the selector attack target in it and i attack the zombie then the zombie will be selected as an entity by the spell that the psi sword is casting which will usually look like this next is entity position operator entity position uh, gives you an entity that you've selected like caster or attack target and then gets the position coordinates of that entity it outputs an entity you've given it as a position vector so if i was standing here and the spell targeting me activated and was put in the entity position it would give the spell my position which is right here Next is entity look. This is kind of like entity position, but instead of a position vector, it's a ray vector. Which, if it were to target me and I'm looking somewhere, it would take the same ray uh, vector as how I'm looking. So if I was looking straight, then the vector it gives would be a straight one. If I'm looking straight up, then the vector would be one that goes straight up. This usually looks like this. Next is the trick debug. Debug is a very useful trick. If you ever have a question on what an output looks like, or you want to know what input you're giving a certain spell, then you put debug in between it. Like if I do, uh, if I do caster, and I put that as the target, boom. It gives me the what it would get what the spell outputs. So caster outputs this as a target entity. In case being me, if it was something like a zombie, this would just be uh, the zombie. Next we have this trick regeneration. This takes a target such as an entity, then it takes a power input which is a constant. 
and the time input which is also a constant and the sentry gives you the effect regeneration which would be the same if i did effect give entity that i choose in this case 8-bit blocks and then regeneration for such time and such power same as that but cost psi next we have this arrow catcher this is a niche one but we're going to use it a couple times so i want to get through it now arrow catcher takes a target which is essentially any spell that you target in here that fails for example um if i did if i put arrow catcher on i think it's like trick strength and this and for some reason due to the fact that i fucked up how the spell works or i put in the long value and trick strength doesn't cast i can then put in a different trick like speed as the fallback and when the target spell fails to cast the fallback spell will instead which we're going to be using a lot later but so far yeah that's the basics of psi uh, or generally the basics we're going to be using in future. I hope you stay around for the future because we're going to be using this information a lot. And we're going to be very clear with each step so that you're never confused. If you are confused, please put in the comments. Alright, so I can know what to work on. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. Remember, I will always be here for you guys and have a great day. Bye.